peoples. In the Old Testament, we know that there are 12 tribes. And in order to guide them, in order to take them forward in their mission, in their, uh, in their spiritual life, God called Moses onto the mountain and Jesus, uh, uh, God Yahweh gave uh, ten commandments to them. And these ten commandments did not help them, not at all helped them. And uh, these twelve tribes miserably failed to obey these ten commandments. Now Jesus is uh, calling a twelve disciples and creating a new community, new Israel. And Jesus is giving a new message and a new law to them. And what is his message? His message is the message of compassion and his message is a message of unconditional love. This message of love, this is what they have to preach. And our vocation, any sacrament that we receive in our life is, is the sacrament is a, the channel of grace. That means the sacrament is any, whether it is priesthood, whether it is religious life, whether it is a marital life, where any sacrament you take, this is a channel where God is calling us to live his unconditional love and compassion in our life. What is this unconditional love and compassion which the Lord showed us on the cross? That uh, you love one another as I have loved you. And uh, every vocation is for this purpose. To, Jesus is calling us to love one another as God loved us. Unconditional loving, life-giving loving, sacrificial love. That we have, we should be ready to die for the sake of others, for the sake of God in our life. That is unconditional love. Are we ready for that? That is the mission of Jesus. Wherever we go, whomever we meet, and whatever, uh, whatever mission we do, the core meaning of this mission is to live this or impart this unconditional compassion and unconditional love of Jesus. And Jesus is calling us for th to live this unconditional love in our life. And today's second reading we see that uh, when God is called many and the people received the faith, then there is a problem arising in the, that Corinthian community. What is the problem? Some people become pride, filled with the proud, pride in their life. And what is that? They, they depend on their knowledge. They depend on their understanding. They depend on their own way of living. And as some people say, I am of uh, uh, Paul, I am of Paul. I, uh, some people say, I am of the safest. I, uh, some people say, I am, of the, I am of Christ. Some people say, I am Apollos. And many people, division is coming there. So my dear uh, sister, fathers and sisters, Two dangers can, be, can happen in our evangelization or in our mission when we go together. What is the worst one? We become proud in our life. Means what? We, uh, we think that uh, everything is happening by my own merits. It is because of my knowledge, it is of my abilities, it is of uh, my strength, it is because of I did, it, is, it happens. No. It is not my strength, it is not my ability, it is not my, uh, my merit, but it is God is doing the mission. If you have, it is the God's mission, and we have to totally depend on God, like a child depending on their parents. We have to totally believe, we have to totally depend on God, and if you become proud in our life, this mission will not go ahead in our life. Second one, what is that? Uh, the division is taking place because that uh, many group. I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of uh, Cephas, I am of Christ. So many divisions are taking place. And uh, this is the two things that can happen. Why these divisions are... The, I also noticed when we have working in the parish, the first thing, parish or any community, first thing what is coming? One is the ego that will work. That is, I am everything. I know everything, I can do everything, it is because of I preached, it is because I did, it is because of my, my capacity, everything. This is a pride will come. If the pride is coming, it is not from God, it is from somewhere else. 
So we have to remove. Second one, what will happen? There will be division. Why there is a division? Because we are called to become an a, a, a undivided unity and unconditional love of God in our life. That means we are called to be in, the, in, the, in company with the Trinitarian unity and love. That is the, the core of our Christian living and the Christian mission. Why God is calling to express this unity and love, to live this unity and love in our community, in our life, so that other people will see it and they will be attracted to our life. So in the Satan knows, other evil spirit knows that if they live in unity and love, certainly, 100% surely, the people will be attracted to this uh, uh, unity of love and unity, unity of compassion and this unity of life, uh, uh, life which we live in our uh, community. And because of that, what will uh, the two things that is happening in every community when we start some mission, some we start to develop something, two things that is happen that will happen. That is the danger that is taking place in our life. One is ego. Second one is a. Uh, 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 one is a division that will happen. So, police uh, tell us that uh, we are called to be one unity. Today, we are called to be one unity. And the police tell us that everything is yours. Apollo is yours. Uh, Cephas is yours. Uh, Christ is yours. Everything is yours. And the police tell him one wonderful thing. You are of Christ and Christ is of God. You are of Christ and Christ is of God. We are called to be, to live that unity and love in our life. So my dear fathers and brothers, as we are participating in this, uh, in this workshop on evangelization, let us prepare ourselves. Let us give totally ourselves to the hands of God. It is not by our merits. Not, it is not because of our prayer. It is not because of our, our any, uh, any extraordinary things that we do. In the, it is the compassion of God. It is the mercy of God. It is the love of God that will take us, uh, that will keep us, that will give us what we are supposed to do in our mission. So let us take that, uh, that spirit of Christ, that, uh, let us become like a Christ in our life and let us understand, uh, assimilate uh, the power of Christ, the power of the Holy Trinity in our life. What is the power of Christ? That is the power of Christ. Brother was telling us that uh, I also was understanding when we speak about the Christ, the mission of Christ, we only, I also used to think about uh, only about the three years of Christ's life what he was doing in three years in his life till resurrection or Pentecost. Now, we were not uh, thinking about the, uh, uh, about the futuric mission of Christ. And uh, he was Alpha and Omega. That he was before, he was same before, he is same today, and he will be same tomorrow. That means uh, we need a futuristic vision. That means uh, sometimes we uh, we fail to think about uh, our life, uh, life be, uh, after this, uh, uh, this life. We think only about our life on earth. And uh, always, maybe for uh, some, uh, some 80 years or 90 years, uh, how I should live uh, 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 a satisfactory life with the happiness, with the maximum pleasure, or uh, doing something. No, we are called to, our life is for eternity. That is what brother was telling. We are called, if anybody, if God has created it, we are created for eternity. We are called for eternity. And if you, uh, if you die, uh, uh, if you happen to, I used to tell, uh, whether it is uh, church teaching, or, uh, we tell about the hell, we tell about that. If, uh, just to think about the hell, that uh, if I am a sinner, and I don't think that uh, God is very compassionate, God will take all of us into heaven. And uh, suppose if you think that uh, if I live in a uh, sinful life, and if I happen to be in hell, what will be our life? For eternity, we will be in hell. 
If I am in heaven, what is that our call is? For eternity we will be with the Father. And our call is for this. We have to be etern in eternity all time. For eternal time, we have to be with the Father. And our call is, we are coming from Father. We are coming from the Trinity. We are live, moving in Trinity. And we will live at the end in Trinity. This is what the Christian life is. So let us remember this uh, aspect of eternity in our life when we live and when we do everything in our life. We are not uh, moving separately in our life. We are living in Christ. We are moving in Christ. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. And nobody can separate that one. Only thing that it is very difficult for us to believe in this. In this. I am in Christ and Christ is in me. And St. Paul is, telling, uh, is asking us in Sunday's Gospel, do you not know that Christ is not living in you? That is a test. And uh, uh, you have to test yourself. And St. Paul is telling Sunday's reading, is a second reading is that uh, you have to test yourself. What is the test? Do you know that Christ is not living in you? That is a test. If you... If you don't know that Christ is living in you, you have, fa you have failed in your test. You have failed in your test. My dear fathers and sisters, let us take Christ with us. Let us take uh, the Holy Trinity with us. Let us live with the Holy Trinity. Let us move with the Holy Trinity. And let us desire that uh, we will be, for eternity, we will be with the Holy Trinity. Let us offer each one of us and may God bless each one of us and this uh, uh, workshop on evangelis evangelization may give us new spirit, new strength, and we may become a vibrant missionaries in our diocese, Chandan. Thank you.